Uh, do you know where Japan is? Yeah. <laughs> In Africa? <laughs> well, um, I think it's a super easy question. Japan is an uh, island country in East Asia. So uh, it's isolated by the ocean from the other countries. And also, it were, uh, Japan closed the country for more than 200 years until um, 19th century. So actually, I think um, our culture and our ethnic uh, is pretty much uh, lack of diversity. Um, it's nothing about uh, Japan, but do you know that uh, maps are, world map is not always the same? This is uh, our map, world map, and the Japan is in the center, not in Far East. <laughs> Um, do you know how large is the land area of Japan? Well, actually, I didn't know. <laughs> if I, we compare to the, the size of the United States, uh, which state is the closest in size to Japan? Harder? <laughs> wow. Anyone else? California. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, the United States is 26 times bigger than Japan, <laughs> and Georgia is far smaller than Japan, and Carter was right. Uh, California is around the same size. Okay. <laughs> and um, in that area, we have 130 million people living there. And the land itself is not small, but actually over 80% of our land is mountain. So only 30% of our land is hab habitat. So that's why our um, houses are very small. And usually people from Japan, uh, Japanese people came here and surprised everybody lives in a mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Climate of Japan is uh, most of the area part of Japan belongs to temperate zone, which means we have four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. It's hot in summer and it's cold in winter, but our, uh, our land is uh, long from north to south, so in southern area, we can go scuba diving, and in northern area, we can go skiing. And our official language is only Japanese. And Japanese is said to be most difficult language for European language speakers because uh, we have complicated read writing systems and also grammar is complicated. We have three writing systems. Um, we have three characters. One, uh, two of them is actually like alphabets, alphabet, so only from the sounds. But kanji is adapted from China, and uh, one char each character has meaning, and you don't know how to pronounce if you don't memorize it. And we usually use uh, more than 2,000 kanjis in daily life, so um, in the school years, we have to learn a lot of kanji. Our, it's a part of our newspaper, so you can see we mixed these characters together. Yes. 
and our language is considered a language isolate. So you can see the linguistic family tree and you can see English and German are close to each other or like uh, French and Spanish are close but you cannot find Japanese anywhere here because Japanese is isolated and some people say uh, Koreans are similar but linguistically uh, it's not related to each other. So um, for as a Europe for European Japanese is hard to study and for Japanese it's hard to learn um, English. So some people say well um, not many Japanese don't speak English or not many Japanese speak English very well but that's why <laughs> so we feel it's not fair. <laughs> Our traditional clothing is kimono. It's made of silk and I think it's beautiful but um, not many Japanese people wear kimono in daily life. Actually only 60% of Japanese uh, have ever worn kimono in their life. Most people only wear kimono on special occasions like wedding ceremony or graduation ceremony such as like a big events and that is because um, uncomfortable like tight and it's not suitable to work or do sports and also very expensive it's a uh, one for one kimono you may pay uh, 1,000 to 3,000 and some of them are more than 110,000 yeah 10,000 yeah, $10, dollars and it's not very uncommon and also if you rent a kimono you have to pay 20 to 200 but I think these are common in common in for the other traditional clothing but the thing is it's hard to get dressed. Only 20% of Japanese actually know how to dress it and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to go to a beauty salon, special beauty salon to get dressed and it costs like fifty dollars to sometimes two hundred dollars and it takes thirty minutes to sometimes more than two hours we have a somehow more informal kimono yukata uh, where's honoka and sayuka you can see yukata they are wearing yeah. <laughs> 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 the, they are less expensive and easy to wear. That's not for the formal occasion, but you can go to festival or um, you can go to watch fireworks. Now, um, let me introduce my daughter, Kana. She goes to uh, Beacon Hill Middle School in Decatur now, but uh, before we came here one year ago, she went to a Japanese middle school. So she's going to talk about middle school. <laughs> I'm going to talk about Japanese school. This is picture of the school that I actually went to. I talk about my experience in the school. This is time schedule of our school. First, we have morning greeting. Uh, morning. In morning greeting, we we listen what principal saying. 
It's kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> we have first, second, third, and fourth period. Class, classes are 50 minutes each with a 10 minute break between classes. After that, we have lunch and cleanup. This is a picture of what we usually eat in lunch. I think this is Japanese traditional that we must clean up what, where we used, so then we clean up our school of ourselves. After clean up, we have fifth, sixth, and seventh, and that's it. School's over. These are subjects that Japanese school have: Japanese, math, social studies, science, English music, art, PE, internet, and cooking. I don't think we have any more. And in Japan, time schedule is ch changing every day. It's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I'm gonna talk about what we do in our 10 minutes break. We basically do talk with our friends, go to the bathroom, or prepare for next period. We love talk about classes, anime, game, and K-pop. At last, I'm gonna tell you about our school dress code. Japan is famous for it has very strict dress code. You can't change your hair color, you can't make up, you can't, no. If your hair is longer than your shoulder, then you have to tie your hair. You can't tie your hair above your ear. You can't use wax, you can't use perfume, you can't wear accessories, you can't put nail, and more. <laughs> uh, these are probably the most public schools. They don't want to we wear whatever we want, but we want to be free. I lived in Japan for 40 years, so I used to live my base on common sense and Japanese rules. But when I came to America a year ago, I could see the unreasonable of Japan for me, the part that I don't like it, and, but also the wonderful part of Japan that I haven't noticed until now. It was good to be able to know not only my own values. So that's all for me. Now. <laughs> Now I'm going to talk about Kyoto. Kyoto is my hometown. I was born in Kyoto and grown up in Kyoto until uh, I graduated the, the graduated the college. Um, after that, I moved from the the other cities, including uh, the United States. But uh, my parents are living there, still living there. So we visit them uh, several times a year. Kyoto is uh, one of the most popular sightseeing um, destination, even in the world. That is because um, Kyoto has uh, many historic sites, and also it's a big city, and 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 also. Um, there are so many universities and colleges. So some people say it's like a Boston. It's like Boston. Kyoto used to be a capital city uh, before Tokyo became the capital, Japanese capital. So uh, we have a lot of um, historic sites. We had over 2,000 temples and shrines and 17 UNESCO World, Heri World Cultural Heritage Sites. Among them, um, these are the most popular ones, Kinkakuji and Ginkakuji, which means a uh, golden pavilion and silver pavilion. And golden pavilion is literally covered with golden, li uh, golden leaves. But uh, silver pavilion is not covered with silver. <laughs> um, it is said because of the, the lack of budget at that time. <laughs> Kiyomizudera Temple is the, one of the most popular ones too. And uh, it's famous for the high stage 
and a beautiful scenery from the stage. Mm. There are uh, many people came he visit here um, for the in the seasons with cherry blossoms and colored leaves. Fushimi Inari, tem uh, Fushimi Inari shrines are a little bit different from the others uh, because uh, usually shrines have only several trees. Tree e is a gate between people and God's areas. So um, usually only several of them, but they have more than 10,000 torii there. And uh, it look a little bit creepy. So <laughs> um, there's a, there are a lot of scary stories set on the, this place. And Nijojo Castle is famous for the beautiful gardens and the uh, Byodo in temple looks like a uh, phoenix, bird phoenix, with, uh, with opening wings. It's, uh, Kyoto is famous, uh, even though you don't go to, go to the historical site, historic sites, you can feel the historic uh, atmosphere if you go walk around the city. There are many um, old townhouses and uh, shops and restaurants uh, in these kind of houses. <coughs> and if your uh, budget is not too tight, then you must go to these fancy restaurants. Kyoto is famous for the food, which is not only good, tastes good, but looks, looks good. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> and also because uh, there are so many young people living there, so you can, you can find um, reasonable but in a large size food there. Like uh, ramen okonomiyaki or teishoku is a set menu. And now let me talk about a little bit about omotenashi. Uh, it's a Japanese way of show the hospitality. And it's outstanding hospitality. And today um, we, our Japanese um, members prepared food, Japanese food. And when they were preparing, they had a lot of discussion about what you guys like or the weather is like. So I think um, they showed omotenashi <laughs> here today. And now I go back to Kyoto and um, Kyoto is a good place to go shopping. You can find a lot of traditional things and also like uh, modern things. So I talked about the good things about Kyoto, but there's one problem. It's very, very crowded. <laughs> like if you go to the kind, that kind of temples, you see a lot of people. Uh, um, and um, the roads are packed with cars. And uh, if you go to the, the it's the one of the most popular or famous festival in Japan and you see a pack of people. <laughs> but I think uh, still it worth to visit, but if you are sick of people, then <laughs> <laughs> maybe you have an option to visit Fukui. This is uh, where we live now. Nothing but beautiful nature. <laughs> well, some historical sites and the uh, rice fields, big rice fields, and uh, good food, especially seafood is famous there. And this is uh, around our area, our area, our neighborhood. We have a lot of uh, huge uh, parks kids can play. <laughs> and Fukui uh, in winter is kind of hard. We have a lot of snow 
and sometimes we have to dig out our cards every day. <laughs> but uh, we are very happy if you visit us in Fukui. So this is all from us. And thank you very much for listening. And Kateicho, arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you very much for coming. And after this, we're all going to have a really good picture at our site, a group picture. And it will be highly appreciated if you all participate in it. I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> no. no question? No? Oh, OK. Questions? Yes, no Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> After the picture, if you would like to ask her questions, she'll be staying to answer questions. But we want to get the picture done now because some people need to leave quickly. So please go outside and look for Loga, the handsome guy who was just talking.